the punditry that's out there right now, what drives you the most nuts this early in the season about the punditry, the analysis of X number of candidates? You know, I guess part of it, uh, lots of things drive me nuts. We have to be here for about a half an hour to go through them. Uh, the part of the same thing is drive you and the audience nuts. I think one of them is how different 2020 is going to be. Nothing we've ever seen. Obviously, every <clears throat> campaign is different than the one before, but it, it's not completely that different to have a number of candidates. If you look at the Republican field in 2016, the Democratic field in 2008. So I think people are getting a little carried away. It's still going to be old fashioned, you know, money that makes a difference. You saw Bernie Sanders with a eye popping five million and people like Beto O'Rourke, if they jump in, are going to raise money. So, you know, it might end up being more conventional during the primaries than uh, we think. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about nothing for a year until there's something to talk about, which to me sounds pretty familiar. Uh, Philip, there are parallels between Brexit and Trump. There are parallels between UK politics and US politics. And we saw today the defection of certain members of parliament in the UK. Would you ever see a split, a proper split, in either the Democrats or the Republicans in the US? Well, first off, the, the comparison I see to Brexit is, you know, funny business with Cambridge Analytica and stuff like that. But to answer your question, I personally think the Republican Party is dead. I mean, it's a dead party walking. I don't see how it comes back from what's gone on the last few years and in some ways uh, since 2010, starting with uh, the Tea Party. And um, it just it isn't going to bounce back to the grand old party days of reasonable, moderate conservatives at the top of the ticket at the top of the party. There's something within it that exploded and I think that there are a number of people, particularly in Congress, mm -hmm. who are walking around deluding mm -hmm. themselves about what's next. I don't know what's next, but I don't think 10 years okay. from now we're going to be talking about the Republican Party like we do today. OK, but Philippe, the, um, you know, for me, the last election was an eye opener because Donald Trump <laughs> actually <laughs> managed to convince a lot of people that had not voted possibly for decades to come out and vote for him. Is there someone in the Democratic Party that can do that? I hope so. And I, you know, when I look at this field, I see more than one president. There are a lot of people who can appeal to those who voted for him in 2016. It's very strange, you know, one out of every five uh, voters on election day 2016 said that they not only voted for Trump, but they had voted for Barack Obama in 2012. And even more interestingly, that they continue to approve of the job uh -huh. Barack Obama was doing that day. How does the mainstream in your Democratic Party, how do they defend themselves against the new socialism? I, you know, it's a tag. The Republicans are great at uh, putting a tag on us. I think you see it, you know, Kamala Harris, Senator Harris was the most direct in saying I'm not a Democratic Socialist. Look, I think people are going to listen to the ideas. If you're talking about health care for everyone, if you're talking about <clears throat> making sure people uh, earn equal pay, you know, call it what you want. People are going to find that appealing, especially after, you know, four years, three years. People can now look at what Donald Trump promised and what he's not delivering. And that, I think, right. at the end of the day, makes more of a difference. 